um, you guys were very early, obviously, to nanotechnology, deep tech, whatever you want to call it now. Um, what do you think are the next areas? So that next generation of investors that are coming up, uh, that are sa sitting there saying, I think that I know something that uh, the mainstream doesn't, where do you think they're looking right now? Well, uh, I can tell you where I think smart people are moving to, because again, it's like, you know, we all read voraciously and we come up with interesting ideas and we kick it around our partnership. But most of the time, it's somebody coming in and us being like, wow, like we never thought about that. So um, over the past few years, we have definitely seen a big thrust of really smart people at the intersection between biotech and computer science, sort of computational bio. And so whether that is modeling in silico and then being able to produce drugs or design proteins or shorten a drug discovery cycle, the tools that you have computationally developed mostly for other IT purposes, um, reaching into the biotech realm is just absolutely accelerating that in a really interesting way. And it turns me on because you have some proprietary technologies um, and the markets happen to be huge because if you can repurpose an old drug more quickly or get something through FDA trials more quickly or better target a potential patient, um, you know, all of that is really accretive. So that one's a little obvious and it's been done over the past few years. An area that I happen to be personally obsessed with right now is, and this sort of fits with a, a broad theme across Lux, is the gap between science fiction and science fact that keeps shrinking, is the gap between simulation and reality. And so when I look across our portfolio companies, often what happens is I start to see a pattern amongst a bunch of companies. I'm like, huh, you know, if you sort of extrapolate amongst these companies, uh, there's some interesting pattern that has emerged. And the interesting pattern, when I look at a company like Matterport, Matterport was taking 3D scans, uh, cameras from Microsoft Connect, basically assembling them into a module, doing a rapid scan of a physical space, and then using software on the back end to stitch these things together so that you could basically have a video game, you know, Doom-like um, walkthrough of a three-dimensional space and then extrapolate into a dollhouse view. And it was just like this beautiful, cool thing. Okay, what's the big deal? Useful for real estate, static images, you know, not dynamic. Combine that with Unity, the gaming engines that are letting you to render, you know, in virtually real time with ever higher precision and resolution. And so uh, I am seeing across our companies, you look at Zooks and Ava that are doing autonomous vehicles or solid state LIDAR to be able to look at the environment and capture with ever higher resolution what is actually happening. Um, you look at some of our companies that are doing this inside of bio, uh, in biotech to be able to image inside of a cell. On the one hand, the ability to capture reality with technology and tools is getting better and better than ever before with higher resolution, higher speed. Um, so that is sort of point number one. Point number two is the ability to model and simulate what you have captured. Now, when you have these two layers, the capture and then the model and simulate, then you have a computational layer between these two things that are talking to each other. And this turns me on because it's this basic idea of consciousness and how we navigate the daily world. You have a memory prediction framework. If I see you and are you wearing a Yankee hat or, okay. So if I see you and you're always wearing the Yankee hat, or if you know me, I'm always wearing my skull vans. Um, when you see those vans the next time, or I see your Yankee hat the next time, and then, you know, I didn't see your face. If you look up, I'd be like, oh, that's pomp. Or you might be like, oh, that's Josh. You're making a prediction based on a part of the whole from the memory. If suddenly you were wearing a Boston Red Sox hat, I would have emotional surprise. I'd be like, oh, I wasn't expecting that. And so I update my priors in like this Bayesian inference. And so a lot of our computers in the machines from autonomous vehicles to sail drones to drones in the sky uh, to defense systems are doing that. They have a model of the world based on capture. They're making predictions. Then they're in, uh, um, interacting with the world based on sensors and then constantly iterating between these two things. That feedback between the hardware of capture, the software of simulation, and the compute layer between them is seeing a flood of really interesting talent. And so um, there will be people pulled from experiments that went into augmented reality and virtual reality, which in a form is that, it's capturing what you see in the real world, putting a layer on top of it, making predictions that will go into all kinds of new industries that we never anticipated. So that at the moment is something that I'm really excited about.